Welcome new first years to this induction lesson by Technical Education. We're going to introduce you to One Point Perspective. We're going to look at what it is, see some examples, learn how to do it, and then we're going to complete some tasks. So let's start with what is it? One point perspective is a method of drawing which makes allowances for the fact that when things are further away from you, they appear smaller than they really are. An example, here we have a set of train tracks where when it's closest to us, you can see that the train tracks are quite wide apart. But as they get further and further into the distance to this point called the vanishing point, it looks as if the rails are getting closer and closer together. Now we know that that couldn't happen because the train would fall off the track if that was the case. The train lines always stay the same distance apart. Here we've got the horizon line where the vanishing point is on. And everything in one point perspective goes to that vanishing point. So it looks like everything is getting smaller as it goes into the distance. Another example, this is a picture done by a pupil um, in class. Here it's a room. At first it maybe doesn't look like it's in perspective, but when we actually start to look at this back wall and I put a little dot on it, this is the vanishing point. And what you can see is that all of the different parts of the drawing go back to that vanishing point. Even the little sofa, which we have got drawn in the end, all the lines go back to the vanishing point. Here's another example. It's a photograph. Again, it doesn't look straight away as if it's in perspective. But can you see where the vanishing point is? Where is, a, where is the horizon line? So how do we do it? What we're going to do is we're going to take a piece of A4 paper and we're going to split it into four equal sections. The easiest way to do this is just to fold it up so that it is in equal sections. In the top left hand corner, you're going to draw a box. It says they're roughly 30 by 30, but don't worry if that isn't your exact, your exact size. Now you're going to take faint lines from the three corners of the cube to the vanishing point as shown. Then we're going to decide upon how deep the cuboid will be with lines like this. We've got a vertical line and we've got a horizontal line. And then we're going to darken in the rest of it so that it stands out. So here we've got a cube which is in one point perspective. What you're going to do next is you're going to repeat that exercise in the other three corners. Doesn't matter what size you make the cuboid. This one here you can see it's much longer. Or this one down the bottom. Again, this one's much smaller. Or the last one, again, much longer. So this is going to be your first task. Your first task is going to be to get a sheet of A4 paper, fold it up so that you've got it into four sections like this, and you're going to draw in each of the corners a cube, and then you're going to turn it into a one-point perspective cuboid. If you can fit more cuboids into that page, all going back to the fashion point, absolutely fantastic. Once you've completed task one, forced perspective. This is going to be your task two. We're going to look at a series of forced perspective photographs. Here we've got two. One, that looks like a tiny little man is going into a huge bottle of Diet Coke. 
Now, we obviously know that a bottle of Diet Coke is nowhere near that size. This is obviously done because the man is far, far away, but it looks like he's balancing on top of the bottle. Similarly for the Leaning Tower of Pisa, is way in the distance, but it looks the sort of size that the woman can cuddle. Other examples we've got here, where somebody in the distance looks like they're dropping into somebody's mouth, or somebody blowing a set of people off their hand, or swallowing a car. These are what's called forced perspective. I would like you as task two to try and create a forced perspective photograph. A bit of fun. I'd really like to see your imagination running wild. So taking your photograph, just maybe use your parents or your brothers or sisters to try and help you do that. Once you've completed task one and task two, please attach a photograph of your completed tasks and email it to me at grl at beauclair.e-dumbarton.sch.uk. I'm really looking forward to seeing your work and I'm looking forward to, to meeting you all in August when you come to Technical at Beauclair Academy.